So this is the view from my back door and the beast from the east, as it is called. Yeah, I reckon we've had about a foot of snow and climbing. No sign of any let up yet. Greetings, connoisseurs of chaos. So, here I am, ready to read you a section from the new book Demon Slayer, uh, which is available now out on Amazon, and it's on a discount if you're watching this between the 2nd of March and the 5th of March 2018, then it's on a discount at 99 pence or 99 cents. So, download your copy now. Anyway, this is a section from the chapter called Black Country Woman, and it's a scene where Merrick and his outcasts have been plunged through the realms into a particular place. Oh, this is Angus, by the way. He's going to join us. Um, a particular place where they're searching for Orthon the Demon, only they come across something that they weren't expecting. And this is how it goes. Are you going to read this with me? All right, you're just going to sit on my lap. Never work with animals or children. A blind guardian, Naomi sent out to him. What? Merrick replied. It followed us even though it can't see? The thing loomed over them, smoke rising from its black skin as if it was a smouldering lava flow spewed out from the mountain above. Merrick could not even bear to gaze at it. The oppressiveness of its presence suffocated his mind despite his psychonautic defences. God knows how the others were faring. It does not need to see. Its other senses are heightened at the expense of its vision. Why does it wait? Merrick struggled to send the message and feared Naomi could not detect it. Such was the weakness of the utterance. Apologies. Reading from uh, an iPhone, not the best of devices. It does not understand us, came the reply. Merrick was relieved that their paralysis did not completely prevent communication. I sense its destructive intent, he said. It's like a pressure cooker at the point of explosion. That it is, but it won't act without further instructions, and I sense it is struggling to communicate with its master. We have to retreat. I need time to revitalise. Then do it. We may not have much time left. Merrick glanced around him and saw with horror that his friends were writhing in the dust, holding their hands to their temples or hugging themselves as if tortured by the Guardian's presence. He forced his hand to creep to his belt as stars filled his vision, the precursor to unconsciousness. He couldn't afford to go under right now. If he did, he would never wake. His fingers found the top of a vial. Every exertion seemed to require an inordinate amount of strength, and the stars formed clusters that no amount of effort could control. As time dripped like glycerin, he removed the top and raised the vial to his lips. Half of the fluid dribbled down his chin, but precious drops entered his mouth too. He soaked them up into his being like water into a sponge. The stars cleared like sprites dancing into the undergrowth, but it was not enough. He needed greater sustenance to charge him for a realm, for a realm jump and he needed more reserves than usual to overcome the gravity that held them in the Guardian's world. He looked up at the beast and tried to gauge its state of mind. There was danger in this. The beast's mental strength was stronger than any he had encountered, save perhaps Avas. Yet it lacked sophistication. It was a steel safe bound with impregnable locks. Yet he sensed its contents were meagre and paltry. Useful as an instrument of destruction, but incapable of independent thought. He couldn't look at the thing for long. It did not possess a head, or indeed any appendage that might make it relatable to his frame of reference. It was this unconformity that appalled him so. He remembered his superficial lectures on psychology from undergraduate days. We fear what we don't understand. As when Aeus had revealed his true form, Merrick's mind reeled from a dislocation that accompanied a confrontation with the indescribable. Accept its nature, he heard Duck Naomi whisper across the void. You will never understand it, but through acquiescence you can be victorious. Victorious? Who could defeat such a monstrosity? He snapped back with a vehemence born of frustration. You can. 
Already you have limited its voice through your presence. Naomi said back to him, Press home the advantage. He looked down at his belt and drew out another vial of ristiatin. With renewed vigour, he downed this new dose in one. He used its revitalising power to stand on his feet. The guardian sensed his exertions and moved towards him. He didn't walk, crawl or fly. Its motion resembled an oozing and a rolling at the same time. There was no doubt as to its predatory intentions, however. Do what you must, Naomi sent. I will try to contain it for as long as I can. Merrick swallowed yet another vial of ristitin and forced his drug mind to initiate a realm hop. The first attempt failed. There was a faint and zipping, abruptly closed by the inhuman coercion of the place. He doubled his efforts and achieved a tear that lasted a few seconds only. I can't hold the gateway open, he said. You must, Naomi came back to him. I can't restrain the Guardian for much longer. Merrick reached for his belt again. He had already exceeded Jason's... Excuse me. He had already exceeded Jason's dosage instructions. Another vileful might cause irreparable psychological damage, but the alternative was certain oblivion. So he shot the fluid into his open mouth. The charge he received from it was even stronger than the cocaine rush he'd felt from his only foray into Class A drugs in the, in the distant past. He knew he would only get one more attempt, and there was no guarantee that his companions would have the strength to pass through. He drew up every vestige of will and held his hands out like claws, drawing them down through the thickening air. His mouth opened as he released a scream of exertion and the pocket of escape appeared again. Now, he shouted at Naomi, you must get them through now. He blinked to clear his vision and when his eyes opened again, he saw Aaron dragging Aislin and Naomi toward the portal. The man's eyes bulged from his head and Merrick knew his exertions were near to breaking point. Naomi stood resolutely with arms raised towards Orthon's entity. The sight of his indomitable, indomitable, can't read it, indomitable companions lent strength to his own, and he forced the aperture open further. The psychic wind blowing through the portal became intermittent. The cause was uncertain, but Merrick didn't delay in exploiting the advantage. He stepped over to Naomi, pulling her by the waist towards the rapidly diminishing pocket. Aaron and the others had exited, and Merrick realised he would have to jump in order to pass through. Naomi had disengaged from the Guardian, who was now roiling toward them like a gargantuan dust storm of cinders. With a final thrust, Merrick pushed Naomi through the gateway and dove after her. He heard the gateway slam shut behind him as he fell to the ground, exhausted. A bit like me after reading that. Thank you for listening, folks. And uh, if you like what you heard, then download the book, um, available exclusively on Amazon. And uh, until next time, Excelsior.